Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the expected value of a box of Amarket. I'm pulling these screenshots from an article from Saffron Olive, and it is also on MTG Goldfish. I will have a link to the article and a comment below, or actually in the description below, I'll have a link to the article. The overall, if you just wanted to get the simple fact, the expected value is under $77 a box and without invocations, with invocations, it is $88 a box. Now, one in every four boxes will have an invocation. So if you're just buying one box, you are likely to get a box worth $77 on average. So why the low expected value? Remember, this is pre-release. This is pre-release prices and they tend to go down significantly during release and then significantly after a 30 to 45 day period of consistent drafting. Now, one of the reasons I have said, and I know a lot of you don't like to hear this, the power level of this set is not extremely high. There's not many cards I would think are modern playable. When we take a look at Gideon of Trials being the most expensive card of the set at $21, and you look at what the gods, they are EDH, they are casual cards, and they tend to go up in time, assuming they're not reprinted. However, they don't have the modern playability, I believe, they need to hold a higher price. So a $21 Gideon is not going to last for very long. Gideon will fall quite soon, as will Nyssa and Liliana. None of the Planeswalkers will be able to hold the price that you see here. Of course, maybe some of them spike, some of them you know, get played in the Pro Tour, Amaket, and people are hyped and really interested, but the large majority of them will not. So when you talk about Mythics, these mythics are not, um, how should I say it? They don't have eternal value to them. Therefore, they will drop. Uh, and they will drop consistently until rotation. Some of them will spike up in price when they go into the meta. But on a whole, this entire set will go down. So you see Gideon at 21. You see Nyssa at 13. Lily at 1281. As for Toad at $10, so those four mythics are above $10 a piece. It is likely that you will get one of those four mythics in your booster box. Hopefully you get multiple ones. But then again, when you take a look at what else we see in this set at the mythic Glorious End, Bantu, they do not lead me to believe uh they do not lead me to be hopeful that the expected value of a box will increase past 77 dollars uh, they're not the type of cards in my opinion that have the ability to spike uh, one of the cards that has spiked since this um, screenshot was hazaret hazaret is no longer four dollars it's closer to 10 so maybe the box expected values are slightly higher uh, on the rare slot, uh, it used to be that the rares would be very good. Like One of the things you look at in any set is not the mythics, but you look at the rares. If the rares are a land cycle that is, let's say, fetch lands or shock lands, and they're about $10 each, that helps the value a ton. Unfortunately, here we have Horse Mentor as the most expensive of the bats at $8. And then we have the cycling lands around $4 a piece. And then not much else, not much else. So if you truly believe in this set, this set is something that you can pick pretty much any card and hope it goes up in price because these prices will get much lower. With the expected box value of $77, I not many stores are going to open a ton of this product. The product will be drafted because it is a main set. So when you are drafting it, you will be opening three packs of this times eight people, that's 24 packs, and then let's say 12 prize packs, that's a box every draft. So this particular product, and there also there will be Magic the Gathering Online Redemption. It's a little more expensive, but it's still doable. 
So the rares in this set are not... Uh, there's always good and bad. The bad here is the expected value of any box is very low. It's the lowest I can remember from a set that has not yet released. The good is prices will go down more and its standard will be incredibly cheap. And not only will standard be incredibly cheap, it will, and these cards will be affordable as singles online, but more importantly, uh, you can be, it creates a friendly environment for new players to come. They don't need to spend $400 on a Jace. I know some people say, oh, you know, we can just not play Jace. Well, I mean, it feels kind of strange when everyone's playing Jace and you're the only person without Jaces. It's not, that's not great for a new player. So let's talk about the rares and some of them I like. So Glorybringer has spiked since this post. And it's also interesting to see because this was only, um, this is Monday. I'm making this video Tuesday night and this video will probably be posted free, a 3 PM on Wednesday. And some of these cards have spiked, but the large majority of them have just gone down into oblivion. So there will be a lot of movement on these cards and some of them will go up and the majority will go down. One of them that has gone up a ton is glory bringer at almost $12 from here. You can see that it is about $4 as a rare every two boxes you should have a glory bringer now one of the interesting parts it is a promo a top eight promo at game day so if you are too worried about its price you don't really need to be worried about it because you should be able to trade easily into it now let's get into the meat of the problem the problem is aver mind sensor which is such a used to be such an expensive card it's $1.39. That is worth looking into. That is a great speculation in my opinion. It may, if it goes under a dollar, it's an instant buy. Um, I actually don't even have Avid Mind Centers. I just have one. I actually need a, my deck, my Filer deck needs more. So to get them for under a dollar, and this is the good. So this is good. Everything is incredibly cheap. But the bad is you shouldn't be buying boxes because you will lose a lot of value even if you are a store. If you're paying 100 uh, in Houston, 110, 120 is not uncommon for some stores uh, selling boxes, then you will definitely lose value unless you pull a invocation, which is a one in four. So you have a 25% chance of breaking even. Otherwise, you will lose a ton of money in your box. And especially if you pay like a hundred bucks a box, it's just not, you're, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it to the break even point. So even, even mind sensor is a very interesting one as is uh, insult and injury. I think that one has some legs. So overall, very interesting to see that the rares are not valuable. Uh, there's a lot of bulky cards and many of these cards are listed at a dollar or $2. Are going to become bulk pretty much overnight unless they make the pro tour or see some type of play now let's talk about the commons and uncommons and the bulk bone picker is one of the better cards it is pretty cheap it, it is an effective flyer cast out is another good uncommon and then sensor rounding it out is probably the third most expensive card when you talk about uncommons, they take the biggest nosedive. The exception, of course, is Fatal Push. Fatal Push has been very steady. I believe it's because a lot of people need four of them in modern, and maybe you need four of them in standard. It is a card that you need four of. Uh, and if you are playing black and modern, it's just one of those things. And even in Magic Duels, I realize I need to buy coins to get you don't get four of them, you get three of them because they're uncommon, but that's just magic duels. That's for another, uh, that's for another stack segment. So most of these uncommons, I don't see bone picker, I don't see cast out, and I definitely don't see sensor as being long-term, long-term value uncommons that somehow become, you know, like a dollar or two. These are definitely not Misha's bobbles, right? They're not even close. So they will be bulk. 
I look at the uncommons in the commons and I don't see any of them that can remain over a dollar after 30 days. So there's not much value there. Uh, sometimes there are exciting uncommons like in Battle for Zendikar, there's that green one, Sylveon Scrying. I like that a ton. That card is just bonkers good and it is one of those uncommons that may not be valuable today. But assuming it's not reprint, reprinted into Oblivion, it will be valuable in the future. I cannot tell you how long it'll take, but I can tell you it's a very good card. So here we get the calculations. If you pull a Mythic, the average value is $8. So if you bought a pack, you got your value back. If you pulled a rare, your average value is $1. Now your bulk in on commons is around $6 for a box. And your foils, you get six a box, they come out to be $9. So your total expected box value is $76.92. Your pack expected value is $2.14. Without, without the invocations. Now, the invocations are kind of interesting because I don't like to calculate them in the price of a box just because most boxes don't have them. And you're in that you're forced to be in a scenario where you hit invocation and you're likely to make back your box and even plus. But if you don't hit an invocation, you're really likely to minus unless you got a foil Gideon or a really good foil. And Saffron mentioned something kind of interesting that I did want to take a moment to address. They are literally running out of cards for masterpieces. There's not many cards that are valuable that have not been reprinted or have not been made a masterpiece. And when we talk about this type of problem, it's because card values for the masterpieces as a set, if you take them as an individual set, the prices have continued to go down. And it's maybe because people are used to them now and it's not something as special. Maybe it's because that the card cards that they choose are not the ideal cards they could have chosen but eventually they're going to run out of cards and they're going to pick cards that are like attrition aggravated assault cards that really in my personal opinion don't have the play like if you pull a masterpiece i would rather have pretty even i want a good feeling you don't want to pull a masterpiece of divert you are aggravated assault or attrition like it's kind of like you won the lottery but then it's disappointing so at the uh, very end of the day i think a masterpiece should be something kind of special and it should have like a minimal set value to it and the fact is each masterpiece set gets less and less valuable and they're running out of good cards to reprint uh, some of these cards have been reprinted in uh, Force of Will, have been recently reprinted in Eternal Masters. Mana Vault has been recently reprinted in Eternal Masters. And a lot of these um, cards, how many times can you reprint them before you either run out of times, you're triple reprinting them, or they just, you know, you're, you're forced in a scenario where as you can see, here's the masterpieces by series. Uh, Battle for Zendikar was close to 100. Then we get down to 78, 77. And then we get down to A for Revolt wasn't that great at 59 or what, 55. And then Amaket at 44, the average value of a masterpiece. That to me tells me that they are doing a worse job or a, the card selection is not as desired. And two, maybe people are just getting really not into masterpieces. But if you were to want to open a masterpiece, do you want to open one in Battle for Zendikar? At $100 a pop, that feels like what they were going for. But at $40 on average, remember this average, that doesn't really feel like to me um, something that you, you get that excited about. There are cards in standard in foil worth that much easily but there's not that many cards worth a hundred dollars in foil maybe liliana um but i don't even believe the liliana of uh, the lily from algic moon is worth that much in foil right it's 35 non-foil i know gideon's around 20 non-foil so i can't imagine his foil being more than 40 
literally 35, I mean at most like 55, 60 for her foil. And that's because she sees some modern playability. But uh, overall, like the card should feel like epic. That's what a masterpiece is. It's a mythic of mythics. And when the average mythic of mythics is $40, that doesn't seem like a great lottery ticket to me. Anyway, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below. Um, bye, guys.